Now, when Loki, when it was just Loki and Ollie, the Yorkie and everybody knows Loki, um, they would come quite a bit. Um, but as of recently, you know, that we well, obviously we haven't been doing any touring this year. <laughs> so um, they haven't, they haven't seen the road in a while. Oh, <laughs> well, that's good. I'm glad that, you know, Loki's happy with the response so far. <laughs> yeah, he hasn't had to whoop anybody's ass just yet. So, you know, hopefully it's going to, it won't come to that. Yeah, he's, he was pretty intimidating rough. in that post. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? Uh, yeah, but I love your cover of uh, Bored. Which Thank is you. Which the Deftones. tones. You know, even though it's a song from 1995, it has a timeless vibe to it. Oh, so. of course. I, I think that's just basically because they kind of, you know, laid a lot of groundwork for a lot of bands today and i think you can you know listen to a, a million bands you know us included and and fairly easily pick out that influence for sure yeah and what was it like bringing it from the stage to the studio because i know you guys have been playing that song for a long time mm -hmm. um it was relatively you know pretty smooth it was really fun to do uh i know that because it just we've been playing it for so long and it was such a cool part of the set. You know, we never really thought about recording it. So, you know, a couple of days off on the road and being close to uh, a friend of mine's studio uh, in Jersey. And, you know, there, there it went. Um, we made a little bit of, you know, kind of put our spin on it a little bit, but still tried to stay true to the original. Um, but I think, the, I think the reception proves that we, we kind of did it okay, you know? No, absolutely. Yeah, I definitely can hear your own take on the song. And it's, you know, not, not like a copy and paste of, you know, the Deftones version. Right, right, right. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. And do you have any um, favorite deep cuts by the Deftones? Man, I, I, mean, I, I mean, I celebrate the whole the whole catalog you know what i mean i think every record that they've ever made has been really head and shoulders above a, a lot of a lot of the other stuff that's out um you know those you know the hardcore like kind of metal elitist guys will kind of say you know oh well gore was no good and you know they lost me a saturday night rest but i think all as they've evolved i think each record actually stands alone and I think that sometimes is hard for a fan to deal with when they have certain expectations of what the, what the record should sound like because of previous, mm. you know, they kind of go in a, in a direction. But I, I love that. I mean, I, I can't really think of any specific song be, that is any better than the others because I'm one of the, you know, I'm old enough to have had, you know, CDs and, and tapes. So you just kind of put it in and let it play. You know, I could do that with any Deftones record. You know, put it in, just let it play, and listen to it from front to back. Um, and that would be perfectly fine for me. Yeah. No, I, I miss the days of going to record stores, like, and just browsing through all the CDs. Makes me wonder Absolutely. if those days will ever come back. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, it's not looking like it. But, <laughs> right. I mean, there's two sides of that, too. I'm the same way. You know, I, I look forward to every Tuesday when my, you know, my favorite bands were coming out with new new records and stuff and going to Tower Records or Wall to Wall Sound and Video and, you know, uh, uh, Sam Goody, any of those places. Um, but it's like a double-edged sword. You know, it, it sucks that that revenue stream has kind of been taken away from the artist. However, the technology enables us to reach more people you know it's like if you are just having a casual conversation i mean this happens all the time on the road you know you talk to the bands that you're touring with oh you got to check out this band and i mean i can just go right to my phone hit up their spotify or their apple music and i can check out the band. not like okay you know write myself a note to go buy this cd you know what i mean mm -hmm. so it's you know it depends on how you look at it i try to be positive as much as possible um you know especially in today's landscape but you know it has its it has its merits that's true yeah like you said it's a double-edged sword but you know with the internet you can discover so much on there just so many like going on so, a facebook group you can discover new bands oh yeah yeah I, I i'm constantly getting added to to groups which is sometimes frustrating 
um, <laughs> because it's like, you know, somebody's just going in and, and kind of, you know, doing the select all and select all your friends and stuff. And then some of the groups, you know, aren't necessarily share the same opinions or mindset as me. So I'm like running as fast as I can <laughs> from them, um, especially with today's political, you know, stuff going on. But yeah, I mean, there's a couple people have added me to music groups and it's really fun to find like the the up and coming bands i mean the tech not i don't know if it's the technology or just the musicianship but i mean you know the drummer like me being a drummer like i hear some of these you know 18 20 year old kids that can play circles around me and i'm just like you know that's like really fun because you know i think we build on who, those who have come before us and you know the drumming has just become so much more intricate and complex you know over the years that i mean very rarely do you find a drummer that just can't like nail double kick like all the way around the kit you know and so that's that's always really really exciting for me yeah speaking of have you seen this uh little young girl from australia I think? nandi right yeah nandi she's crazy good <laughs> she's awesome man. i love her energy it's so like contagious just watching I'll tell her play you, the first time you know there's been a couple videos lately uh, my wife laughs at me because she'll, uh, one of the big ones is the, the TikTok video of the dog face guy drinking the um, cranberry juice on his longboard. Have you heard that with uh, Fleetwood Mac dreams in the background? Oh, I don't think I've seen that, but I'm going to have to watch that now. <laughs> You'll have to check it out because if you're in a bad mood and you watch that video and you're still in a bad mood, there's something wrong with you. Like you got to get your stuff checked out because that video was so cool. Um, and I watch it all the time. I'm in a bad mood and I just go look him up his, his handles like 420 dog face or something like that. And it's just like, it's, you know, 30 seconds of just pure like joy kind of for me. I don't, I don't know what, what it is that connects with me about that so much, but when, <laughs> you know, this, during this quarantine thing, you know, it leads us all into, you know, different places and, you know, not being able to do what we love to the extent that we want and, you know, kind of feel like our hands are tied a little bit. Um, when I first saw the first Nandi video, I think it was a uh, system of a down yeah. was the song she played. And I was like, this is crazy. You know, this, this little girl, you know, and it's like, I remember, you know, jamming, you know, years and years ago on a kit. And I remember jamming toxicity and stuff like that. And, you know, trying to like, you know, rewind in the CD just to like get the, all those fills perfect. And like, she's like nailing it nailing it and then i saw another video where she plays guitar and bass and i'm just like that is just super you know, know. awesome to incredible. see someone that talented that young yeah it gives you hope for the future you know that you know these there's going to be talented musicians way in the future it's going to be <laughs> yes. really awesome to see her when she's you know a teenager yeah, I just hope that there's an industry for them to flourish in, honestly, you know? <laughs> yeah, and I think she's um, going to do a song with Dave Grohl of Foo Fighters. I saw a video I saw of the drum battle thing, and, and that was that was super cool the way he did I mean, I, I don't know that anybody can argue that, that Dave Grohl is just a national treasure, man. That guy is super positive um, about everything, and, you know, he... he you look at, you know, his life from the beginning, you know, it wasn't easy for him. He went, you know, I can't imagine being in the biggest band in the world and then all of a sudden it just being gone. You know, mm -hmm. I don't know that I would have been had the perseverance that he did to just kind of pick himself up off the floor and, and do everything and, and watch his, you know, career. I mean, he's a, a rock god now, you know what I mean? And it's and, and, and the nicest guy you'll ever meet. Absolutely, yeah. Every time I see him in the news, there's always – it's always something positive. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You don't see him, you know, even when he's kind of like bitching, you know what I mean? Or, or trying to point out something negative. He just approaches it with such a positive mindset that it's not nearly as, you know, negative as it could be. He's just very good at, at the way he talks to people and talks to the public. And that's, that's something that I can get behind and kind of respect a lot. Yeah, definitely. And I want to ask you about working with uh, Corey Glover of Living Color. What was it like um, doing a cover of Cult of Personality? Man, that was a blast. Um, that kind of came together like pretty, 
uh, organically, so to speak, is um, we, that was just a song that we, I mean, early stages of the band, like kind of the same time that we were putting together the live show for like the first tours, we were talking about what song, you know, do we want to do a cover? Do we not want to do a cover? And, you know, kind of had a list of songs and, you know, Deftones was on there, of course, and that one ended up winning. Uh, Cult of Personality was just always a song that I personally wanted to cover because it just has such a cool groove and such a, a very introspective meaning behind it. And um, it just, I, I really believe it's timeless. I mean, with you can apply it to any, you know, generation, any decade, and it's it really is a great, you know, kind of look at, you know, the, the broadband, you know, worldwide spectrum. So um, we just never put it together because it was, a, it was a, it's a tough song, you know what I mean? It doesn't sound like it's much, but like to do it justice, like that rhythm has got, to, that groove has to be really tight. You know, the, <clears throat> the guitar part needs to be a, a very specific, you know, way. And that was one of those songs that it just like became, you know, it's like, I don't want to do it if we can't do it justice. So we would jam it a couple times at this lineup and, you know, just didn't really feel it. You know, and then it kind of took the back burner. And then the sit that um, those that song was actually tracked at the same time as Board was. So the same sessions. So those two songs came out of the same sessions. And um, once we kind of put together the parts and jammed it out a little bit, it was like, OK, OK, this could work. So uh, Corey was playing close to me and I've been friends with his manager forever. And went up to the show to see everybody, and uh, I let Smitty, his uh, manager, check it out. And he's like, oh, dude, this is great. Like, and it was just the music. It was like a rough demo. You know, he's listening to it on my phone. And, and he's like, dude, this is, really, this is really cool. You should show this to Corey. So I showed it to Corey, and he was just like, man, that's really cool, man. And he's like, I'd like to be a part of that. And I'm like, really? So... <laughs> um, yeah, so he was out uh, after that. It took some time to, for scheduling because he was doing that uh, David Bowie tribute, the the Bowie experience or whatever, with all like the alumni from David Bowie's band. So he had been really busy with that for like you know a year and a half or whatever at the time. So it was kind of hard to put the schedule together, and that's why you know the reason why that song took so long to come out, um, being the music was pretty much done in like 2018. Um, but we were able to get together and you know rock it out, and I think the way Tripp and Corey, you know, kind of worked off each other was really fun. He was super easygoing to work with. He came in and was kind of like, you know, they did a couple run throughs, you know, by themselves. And then they kind of sat in the, in the control room and were just like, all right, so let's break this up. How do you want to sing this? You know, which parts do you want? And he was just so humble and, and grounded. In, and he was like, you know, he, he came in and it's, it's like his song. And he, you know, Tripp's like, all right, so what do you want to do? And Corey's like, I don't know what, you know, what do you want? He made it like about us, oh, you know, wow. like, yeah, it wasn't like, dude, you know, you're going to, we're going to do it this way because my song, like it wasn't right. that at all. And just being around him, he's such a positive person and um, he's got so much knowledge and so much experience and wisdom, it, you know, the, Aside from recording that song, it's like you just listen to the, the like the the stories that he's telling you, and you're just like, man, like he has truly done it all. And here he is. It's kind of like you got to pinch yourself, you know, because I remember being a kid watching MTV, you know, and seeing that video come on and just being like, what is this? Because it was unlike anything that I had personally heard, you know, because I was a kid. I mean, that song came out and. You know, I was like seven or eight years old when that song came out. So it was like I was kind of, you know, I did I was listening to it from a very, uh, you know, kind of a blank slate. You know, the stuff that I remember being on MTV was like, you know, like Ugly Kid Joe and, um, you know, Motley Crue, like Without You, that video sticks in my head for some reason, you know, from that time period. So I hadn't discovered bad brains yet i hadn't discovered fishbone yet i hadn't discovered like all of these bands that really worked groove and funk into rock you know with distorted guitars so it just blew my mind and that song has just always been one that i wanted to do i mean i've been wanting to cover that song i mean since my first bands you know back in like the 
late nineties, early two thousands, but it just never seemed like it fit the identity of the band. And I mean, Trip just, I mean, one day he was just came in to early on, he came into the house where we were recording the first record and he was just like, he had just heard that song on the radio. So he comes walking in, you know, like Trip does, you know, with his strut and everything. And he's like singing that song to himself. And I'm just like, God damn, that sounds great. That could work someday. And it just, you know, I'm, I'm, it stinks that it took four years for us you know, being a band, you know, almost five years for us being a band to get around to doing it. But there's so much, um, I feel like there's so much judgment on bands that do covers sometimes, you mm-hmm. know, and you, we kind of wanted to have a foundation of our own original music before do- doing the covers. You know, I feel like some bands, you know, they get popularity from doing a cover and then, you know, they don't really have the original original material that relates to the fans in the same way. So they, I don't feel like that they get a fair shake at their original material first. So that was kind of, you know, in one way, sucks it took so long, but in another way, I'm glad it worked out the way it did. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's pretty cool that you went from seeing that music video on MTV to actually working with the original artist. That's yeah I I'm true I would say for a lot of people <laughs> that's a dream come true that is definitely one of those things that is I'm glad that I was fortunate enough to do it you know yeah and you guys have also toured extensively with some heavy hitters in rock music and with touring on hold when you look back at you know your tour experience is there a specific moment that you kind of reminisce with fondness (laughs) oh i mean every tour you know has its ups and downs for sure so i mean there's quite a a few moments that i could think i mean going back to like even our first tour you know we we were very since we're going out and headlining and you know all of the guys from the original lineup and today's lineup you know everybody kind of has their own tour experience so they've been out you know and they've kind of develop their own personal fan bases and personal relationships each place. So we were really selective about where we did our first run because, I mean, we were nobody, you know, it doesn't matter what, if you, you know, if you accomplish anything before, when you start a new band, it's a new band and it's going to be looked at like that. It's very hard to take, you know, to even get everybody out to, to get the information out when you're starting a new band to your previous band's mm-hmm. fan bases and stuff like that. So um, I mean, when the first couple shows, when people are actually showing up to see it, we're like, okay, you know, this is cool. You know, people are actually interested in this and this could work and this could do, you know, so that, you know, of course is one, one thing. I mean, uh, dude, there's just so much. I, I don't really, I mean, it's a, that's a tough question to answer because there's so many cool things, you know, it's like, it could be something simple as just watching trip, like command his audience and interact and have them like just the, the that look from like the the first five rows you know and just it being packed with people and having everybody just hanging on every word that he's saying you know that you know i can think of a couple times that you know i who knows what venue it was there's lots of jack daniels on the road uh so i can't figure out an exact moment but i know it happens you know it happens <laughs> yeah. quite frequently um and then just you know tour pranks you know they're always fun it's always really cool when you can connect with the bands that you're on bill with um and just kind of have fun because some tours aren't really that fun when it comes to interacting with the other <laughs> bands you know just depend not and that's not necessarily a knock on anybody it's just sometimes personalities don't you know, mix, you know. Right, yeah. Are there any bands that you're dying to share the stage with, you know, once uh, tours can happen again? Man, I would love to, I mean, there's not really like a band that, I mean, of course, everybody wants to tour stadiums with like Metallica and Shine Down and, you know, those type of bands. But I kind of look at touring now a little bit differently is I want to tour with like my friends, you know, I would love to go out with the guys in non point. I would love to go out with uh, our producer Corey. I would love to go out with Seether, 
you know what I mean? Just to kind of like, you know, have, fun, have a little bit of fun on the road. And, um, but I mean, yeah, I mean, there's, a, there's a million, million bands out there. You know, I would love, you know, one of the most fun tours I ever had, um, as far as like the other bands on the bill was seasons after and bridge to grace, like everybody on that tour really got along well. And that was a fun tour. Um, so if seasons after ever put, ever put it back together and wanted to go back out, you know, I would absolutely go with that. Um, but yeah, I mean, pretty much anybody who's cool. I don't know. <laughs> you know, I, don't know. <laughs> I mean, at this point I'm like, beggars can't be choosers. Like I'll go, play a, I'll do a Denny's tour right now just to get some like <laughs> pe uh, personal interaction with people exactly yeah I guess whoever will would make it a positive experience yeah yeah and and that's that's all it's about um it's a lot easier to deal with the trials and tribulations that every band on every tour is going to go through if you're having a little bit of fun you know you get you know, if you're supporting on a tour, you know, you're getting 30 to 40 minutes to play, you know, there's a whole nother, you know, 23 hours and 20 minutes of the day. And if you're not surrounded by people that you enjoy being with, it can make for a pretty miserable time. <laughs> a long day. <laughs> we, yeah, we've been through that too. <laughs> so, uh, uh, but I think everything for all the negatives, it makes you appreciate the positives. Exactly. And so what else is uh, coming up for Gears that people should be on the lookout for? Well, we took a break. We toured pretty hard from 2014 to 2018. So after we finished in the fall with all that remains in 2018, we kind of decided that we were going to take a little time off. Um, you know, Trip had a, a toddler, you know, he wanted to spend time with, and he had some other business things he wanted to, you know, explore, and same here, and you know, I had a bunch of stuff that I wanted to, you know, kind of um, delve into myself. And so we took 2019 off, which, you know, had we known that a worldwide pandemic was going to hit in 2020, maybe we would have waited. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> but but um, so we had a bunch of kind of half done songs, you know, from, you know, taking days off uh, on tour and going in the studio and working on things. We had a so we have like five or six, we got a bunch of stuff and we're just going to put out some singles first. Um, hoping to be able to get out another single before the end of the year, but I'm not really sure that that's going to make any sense. Um, so it's kind of up to, we got a great team behind us um, working with as far as releases go and it's going to kind of be up to them you know, what, what do we think is, is the, is the best thing to do? You know, we just, we really kind of wanted to get this Deftones cover out just to let everybody know, Hey, we're still here. And, you know, quarantine, it seems like, you know, even though we recorded it in 2018 and 2019, it seems like covers are a pretty good way to kind of um, get everybody's mind off everything for, you know, th three, four minutes. And if, you know, so if somebody likes it, <laughs> you know, they can kind of, <laughs> you know, be a distraction from the everyday grind and, and stuff that everybody's going through. But um, we've got a bunch of stuff that we're, we're about ready to release. And, you know, it's just going to be the timing of it. You know, does it make sense for everybody like around the holidays, you know, because it's not just releasing a song just to release a song. There's so much promo and marketing that you have to line up to go behind it. You know, if nobody's answering the phone, you know, when you, when our radio promoter goes to the radio stations, it's like, you know, if, if everybody's off for the holidays, you know, it's kind of tough. And, and, and I don't know how to, I don't know how to estimate what is going to, you know, how the holidays are going to work this year um, because everything seems to have been changed and been different. And that kind of, that kind of, makes it a little sticky for us but you know we trust in you know our people and and the people that are working with us uh, to figure out the best plan for release so but there is tons of stuff coming i will say that that's exciting <laughs> <laughs> yeah even though this has been an abnormal year you know like you said music helps everyone cope with it so yeah i think you know releasing that cover it's it's a good way for people to kind of reminisce about the good times. 
Yeah. And I mean, like that's the 90s. Like, yeah. I mean, I, dude, that was my, that's my early teenage years when that record came out. And I remember exactly where I was the first time I heard it. Uh, you know, I, I was friends with a couple older guys and one of them had his license. So we would like drive to school and from school with him, you know, and we cram like four or five guys into this, like, uh, I want to say it was a, it was like a souped up Cavalier. So it was like the Z26, oh, wow. <laughs> whatever it is, you know, I'm, I, dude, I'll never forget. It was a, it was a white Cavalier tinted windows. He had a, like a, a bazooka base thing in his trunk, you know? So, and I remember the first time he picked me up one morning and I was the second person that he picked up. So he'd pick up my boy, Steve, and then he'd pick up us. And, and they were, they were jamming this record. And I was just like, wow, like, this is super awesome. Like I, I'd never, it was a totally new sound then, you know, that mm -hmm. was like the birth of new metal for me. You know, I, I heard Deftones before I heard Corn. you know, I mean, they were right around the same time, but you know, that's. Deftones was definitely first. So whenever I hear any of the, the songs from that time, it just, you know, carefree days, man. Exactly. Who knew? <laughs> Everybody tells you, you know, when you're a teenager and when you're in high school and you just can't believe it, you know, that these are the best years of your life. It, it's, you know, then as you get older, it's like, uh, maybe you're, I mean, twenties were pretty cool, you know, getting legal to drink and being able to go out and, you know, do, do certain things. But, yeah, definitely, uh, definitely nostalgic. Absolutely. <laughs> well, I really appreciate your time, Jimmy. Is there anything else that you want to um, mention before we sign off? No, no, I think, I think, uh, I think we covered everything. I really uh, appreciate you taking the time to spend with us or with me, excuse me. I say us cause I'm so Oh yeah. Good. Is Loki <laughs> still there? <laughs> Loki's still there. He, now he's got Thor next to him. They're like bookends. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Well, thanks again, Jimmy. It's been a blast chatting with you. Likewise. Hopefully we'll do it again sometime soon. Yeah, definitely. Hope to see you in Boston sometime. Oh, that's that's a market that we definitely want to get back. See, I'm originally from the East Coast. So uh, I, is it I, Max uh, as well? Uh, Max I, in Boston. <laughs> uh, Max, I do, but yeah, I think he went to uh, he went to Ber Berkeley. Yeah, Berkeley, yeah. yeah. I think he's and, uh, you know, friends with some people I know, so <laughs> Yeah, dude, Massachusetts was always, they've always been really good for us. I mean, other than me being a Yankees fan, so, you know, that there's that whole thing. But um, we've always had fun going there. Last time we were through there, we were with, you know, through the New England area. I think we played Providence, um, which isn't far from you, um, yeah. was with what's on that All That Remains tour. And it's really cool when you're touring with a band. Oh, we did New Hampshire, too. Um, but it's really cool when you're touring with to go through a band's home markets and like all their friends are out and you know especially when it's a band you know like all that remains that you know just crushes it and they draw a bunch of people anyway and then it's just a totally you know because they're very business you know like they get they get stuff done and and they've been doing it for so long it's kind of it's it's just you know they're a machine but on those nights when you know the wives are out and the girlfriends are out and the friends and parents and stuff are out, I always enjoy watching that interaction between my tour mates and their families. You know, it's it's yeah. cool. Stuff. Makes when it extra on, special. <laughs> yeah, well, when you're on the road away from your family and you know missing your wife and kids and dogs and stuff, it, it's cool to see you know see other people getting to you know maybe hook up with people that they don't necessarily get to see all the time. Yeah, I can imagine that's a good feeling. For sure, for sure. But yeah, Massachusetts is on the list. We're coming back. Perfect. <laughs>